3D Bumblebee Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! So in today's video I'm going to be doing a 3D Bumblebee that's actually sitting above the nailer's little spacer underneath. And that, because it has that spacer, it's not really wearable because chances are as you're going about your day doing your hair, digging your purse, that little bumblebee is going to get caught and probably get ripped off and that's that's not really what you want. So it's not a wearable design, it's more of a practice or something like that. Otherwise if you did want to wear it you could just either paint the bee on there or have him sitting directly on the nail and maybe change up the way he did his wings a little bit. Anyways, I hope you like this design and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well. So I'm going to start by creating an overlay on my nail tip with brown acrylic. And because, as I mentioned, this isn't a wearable design or something that I intend on wearing, especially for an extended period of time, I might wear it around the house just for fun because I like it, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I'm not too concerned about making sure this nail is very thick. So I'm just doing all these layers really thin. So then the next layer I'm doing is a layer of gold. I didn't like the color of my gold and I didn't like the color of my brown. So I did a layer of each and they kind of show through each other. So it came out to be looking about how I'd like it. And now I'm going to be encasing it with a very thin layer of clear acrylic just to protect that shimmery quality that the gold has. And so now I'm going to be filing it just to smooth it out and thin it out a little bit with a 180 grit file. And this is going to want to it's going to smooth it out because you want a really smooth surface once you start forming those hexagon shapes. So then I'm going to be buffing it with a 240 grit pad of buffer to remove any scratches that that other file may have left behind. Now to make my hexagons, I'm going to be using a gel acrylic hybrid to form them. So I'm going to take some white builder gel and I'm going to be mixing in some yellow and some white acrylic polymer. And I'm just going to, I'm using a disposable coffee stirrer to do this and so if you don't have these on hand like I do um, if you just you can just get one from like a coffee shop and then I also decided to mix in a little bit of gold polymer as well just because I wasn't quite getting the color that I was hoping for and I just keep mixing mixing it until I have the right consistency that I'm looking for you want this to be fairly thick and so it doesn't run or move on its own and it is easily mo moldable that's the word I'm going for. So then I'm just going to apply some of that onto the nail and then with a brush that I've saturated with 90% um, isopropyl alcohol and then dabbed off the excess of the isopropyl, I'm just going to be pressing out the mixture onto the nail tip. And as you can see, I can get it fairly thin, but you don't want to get it too thin because if it's too thin, then the three-dimensional quality of the honeycomb isn't going to be as apparent. So I just kept adding some and pressing it out, going a little bit further. If you didn't want to work with the entire nail at once, if you wanted to do it section by section, you definitely could do that. I would probably work on diagonals just so that the hexagons fit properly and make sure it had a nice clean edge that you can come back to later on. I decided I was in it for the long haul, so I just decided to cover up my nail in entirety at this particular stage. And you want to try to get this as as smooth as you possibly can. So I'm sorry that I missed that first one, but now we're going to be carving out our hexagons. And to do this, I just have my toothpick and periodically I dunked it into acrylic polymer just so that it doesn't stick to this gel mixture. And then carve out your hexagons. So first I drew their outline and then I just sort of twirled my toothpick in the center of it to scrape out the excess. And if you do need to touch up any of your lines, you can take that gel brush that you were using before and just touch them up. Or if you completely mess up a hexagon, you can reapply the gel hybrid acrylic mix stuff that you just made and put it back into the hole that you created and flatten it out and try it again. And that is the beauty about using this particular mix is that there is no time limit. You don't ever have to flash cure something because the gel is going to float. You never have to worry about your acrylic setting before you're done. You have the ability to just keep working on it until you're satisfied. However, if you are in the sunlight, your gel is progressively going to cure. So do keep that in mind. You don't want to do this in direct sunlight or with any sort of UV light over the top of you. And then I'm going to be applying gel sealer over the top of it. And I definitely want this to have a nice shiny quality, which is going to help give it that honey appearance. And so now I drew out the shape of my bee's wings on a little piece of a yellow post-it. And then I placed a nail form backing on top of it, and you can see through it to make your bee wings. So then I'm just with clear acrylic sculpting out the wings 
to the shape that I drew on the paper underneath. And now I'm going to be making my B on the same nail form backing, so I'm going to do it with black and yellow and white. So that first bead is going to be the middle section of your bumblebee, and now I'm going to be adding some yellow on top of it. And when you're doing this, I would there's many different kinds of bees, so you don't have to make it exactly like mine. You can look up a picture and get yourself a different pattern because they're, I don't know, fuzz is in different patterns and their coloring is not all the same. So now I'm going to be working on the end of my bumblebee with first a little bit of black and then some yellow. And then right where the stinger is of my bee, there is white. So that is the last bead I'm going to add to this section. Actually, no, there's black and then there's white. Sometimes I say things before I know what I'm talking about. So it goes black, yellow, black, white. And try to create a little bit of a point on the end of your bumblebee and add his head. So then I'm going to take, and I'm using two nail implements that I'm setting on either side of my bee at the right distance for the wings to rest on, putting down a little bit of clear acrylic with tweezers grabbing my wing, setting it in the clear acrylic, and resting it on the edge of that nail implement so that the wings tip up. And then I'm going to be doing that on the other side, once again, so that his wings tip up. So now I'm going to be thickening up my bee, so I'm going to add a second layer of acrylic in the same colors as I did all over him. But first I'm going to be putting in his antennas and tipping them up with my tweezers just like that, and then adding more acrylic over the top of my bee. And the, what I did for his antennas is his two little pieces of black thread. And make sure when you're adding the acrylic over the top of your bee that you don't get any colored acrylic on your wings because that's going to kind of ruin the effect. So try to keep as much of it off the wings as possible. If a little bit gets on there or if it gets really bad, you can try filing it, but I'd just try to be careful. And then I'm also going to sculpt a little black circle on the side that's the same size as the underside or that middle section of my bee because that's going to fit on the underside and it's going to hold his legs in place. So now to make his legs, I'm cutting eight pieces of thread. Two of them were for his antennas, but now the other six are going to be for his legs. So after you have them cut, tie them a knot in a knot straight in the center, and that's going to be the little knee joint of your bumblebee's legs. And then I forgot to record attaching my, bumbles be my bumblebee's legs, and I will put a link to another video that clearly describes it so that if you need to see that process, you can go ahead and check that video instead, and I'm very sorry that I forgot to show that part. But then you're going to want to cover up your bee with some flocking powder, so paint regular top coat on, and then add some flocking powder over it, and I'm using sort of a goldish brown acrylic, or flocking powder over the yellow acrylic, and then black flocking powder over the black. That is a tongue twister. And so after you have your flocking powder on there, just tap it off and then with a brush that you don't really care about, try to brush, brush off as much of that extra powder as you can. Attach your bee first by creating a little stand of clear acrylic or a spacer on one section or try to do it in the middle of the of some hexagons so that it's not sort of half in half out so it's on the top of some of that yellow and just add beads of clear acrylic pressing them in from side to side so that they add this little bit of height to them but it doesn't need to be super big around so just keep pressing it in from side to side so it goes up not out attach your bumblebee to that little spacer with some more clear acrylic and then i'm going to be gluing his feet into place with some nail glue you can use nail glue or you could also use top coat, but believe me, nail glue is the way to go because it goes a lot faster. Even if you do not like nail glue like I do because I glue things, this is a time when I break out the nail glue. And even then, I still struggle with glue. You pretty much have to hold the little bumblebee foot in place until that glue sets. And so, as you can imagine, if you're using top coat, you'd be holding each leg for a little while until it's set because that dries. You'd probably be holding legs for a couple minutes a piece, 
which I don't know about you, but I'm not patient enough for that. And with nail glue, or I'm actually using super glue, you really only have to hold it for maybe 15 seconds for it to set because it dries really fast. And now I'm going to be adding the final details to my bumblebee, like some little veins in his wings with a dark red. And I'm using diluted red paint to do that. And then with a golden yellow color, I'm going to be adding stripes on his antennas and down his legs. And then I'm going to be adding two little dots for white eyes. And then with gel sealer, I'm going to be painting over the exposed areas of my bumblebee, but not over the flocking powder. So it's going to be his stinger, his face, his wings, his antennas, and his legs. And carefully do this over the legs and the antennas so that you don't weight them down. But this is also going to help stiffen them so that they last a little longer. Cure that and you're all done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this design. Please share any recreations with me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I would really love to see them. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!